Senoras y Labiqueros. The Sennheiser, 431, MD 431, Mark II, which implies it was a Mark I. How I came by it, somebody mentioned on uh, one of the responses to a review, the 431 and its predecessor, the Mark I and the Mark II. So I thought, I've never heard of this one, Dynamic Mike, I had a little look. My goodness, audacious, probably the most expensive dynamic mic known to woman. I've had a little look just now, and most of them are like a third the price. Bayer Dynamic M88, I think it's around 280, is it 300, something like that. This is about 360, so into uh, condenser territory. Unboxing charts and accessories, I did the unboxing. Here it is. Now, where's my SM58? Uh -huh. Yeah, you get the idea. Okay. Why is that then? We'll have a look. Sorry about the noises. Well, there's a microphone and uh, an amount of foam at either end. I hesitate, <laughs> I don't actually, to go on again. But uh, really? Is it me? Are you going to take this to a gig? Excuse me. <clears throat> oh, okay, it's kind of slippy. It's huge. There's no handle. It's got little feet made of the same sort of slippy plastic. Well, you know what I do. Yet another one for the cupboard. So here's the mic with its clip. We'll look at all this stuff closer. But in the meantime, I thought, aha. I've been using it yesterday at a double gig. Yeah. Biodynamic to the rescue, except um, not really. You can tell it's a big microphone. Maybe my pencil cases. Uh, not really either. Well, it's about Sennheiser. There are other microphones come with this one doesn't come with a case. We can see why. Nope. Biodynamic. Once again, they do a slightly larger one. Aha. Uh -huh. Apart from the zip. Oh dear. Job done. Slightly bigger than it needs to be, but who's... Anyways. I'll leave you to consider that. What the manufacturer has to say. One... One of our most exceptional microphones. Supercardioid for vocals, speech and broadcasting. Exceptional feedback rejection, shock mounted capsule for very good rejection of handling noise, hum compensating coil. Usual stuff, frequency response 40 hertz to 18 kilohertz. I thought, hmm, 40? Okay. Uh, dynamic mic, super cardioid sensitivity. Oh, no, I think one has to ask why are they charging so much? Do they imagine we're all bottomless bits? Or is there gold plating or maybe a diamond encrusted somewhere? Is there some magic in the frequency response? I have it here, and it should be on the screen. All being well. Well, uh, this, this looks like a sort of generalization, biodynamic. Uh, you, you, and probably other manufacturers as well, used to produce an actual trace on graphs, kind of, on a graph a paper. It's rather quite uh, charming. And I think it was for the actual mic. It was measured on their machinery, the trace was, on, it was supplied in the box. 
this to me looks like a, a generalization in that it's way too smooth. It's been smoothed out. Most seem to be that way. Some of them very um, vague these days. But uh, remarkably flat across the middle, a little bit of a sag, uh, gentle uh, rise at the top end, and then another little hump up to, uh, I think they say 16 kilohertz, something like that. The low end, there's no proximity trace, so again, I'm looking at 150, just under, it's starting to dive away. That doesn't sound to be the case to me with uh, uh, obviously proximity coming kicking in. But I do believe there's some uh, jiggery pokery in uh, circuitry to uh, maybe the transformer or the capacitor or something to do this roll off, low end roll off for stand noise and handling noise and what have you, which as I keep saying we have got in the on the desk because it does cut into the voice, some voices, even female voices a little. So let's have a little look and see if it can justify its uh, stratospheric price tag for a dynamic microphone. Coming up. Let's get down to it then. Firstly, the clip, you'll notice this ring here. The clip does have a lip on it. And that, uh, the idea of that is that it engages, well, yes, with the uh, indentation around there. The idea, it says in the manual, is, uh, is that uh, if you've got it uh, like this, it won't slide out. Uh, my limited experience is that because there's some play there, that may or may not be the case. So I don't know. Anyway, for, yeah, I suppose if you make sure it's seated. It's quite firm. Yeah. Now, when I first got it, I thought, oh, is it plastic? And then I thought, what's wrong with plastic? It's very uh, useful in situations. And for a mic body, hmm, took me a while. Students and other singers... So oh, a lot like the fact it's it's light. Um, one of the lightest mics I've got, which made me think maybe plastic as well. They liked it anyway, and it's kind of grown on me. And also, you know, say, what uh, if it works? The sound of it. I'm going to move it away and uh, tap the barrel and then the top. Mm, kind sounds kind of plastic. That's the top the grill. On the site, it says it's a zinc alloy. I even got one of my father's old dental instruments, and I removed this, which we're going to do now. Everything quite light, nice enough. I made a mark somewhere here with it. It's a very uh, sharp and hard instrument. It's meant for scraping teeth, as you can imagine. And uh, yes, it seemed to mark it in, without uh, any highlight or anything. It seemed to go into it. But maybe that's this ring here. I don't know. Anyway, they say it's thing, so there you go. This is uh, shock mounted, as you can probably see. Not so much in that direction, but then I figured I suppose the diaphragm's like that, so that's probably most important. The grill the mesh there and from what I can see that's the only mesh and then foam which is quite you probably can't see with the light you can see through it's because it's not very thick the foam and another amount of something on the the top I have noticed that this can be a little bit the threads are fine it can be a little bit difficult to start. I've got it there. So be careful with that. And actually, I can see on the threads what appears to be some bright stuff there, which is the metal, I guess. So there we are. Now I've got to do this again. Well, there we go.
one thing I did notice has a switch and uh, it works fine but it's a little bit if I put it to the mic you can hear it rattles mm, well it's an expensive microphone I see no gold inside I don't think even the pins are gold are they probably doesn't matter because I looked this up and I agree with what I read is that if it's gold plated it's going to wear off in no time anyway unless it's solid gold and even that wears because gold's soft so uh, yeah but in a mic this you know what I feel about the switch it's lockable I use the switches on the cable so I don't need it makes it even worse because you've got two to fiddle about with I don't know which one's on and which one's off well it comes with it you can lock it uh, I'd like a nice and no rattling I've come to notice of late a discrepancy between what I hear and what I see when it comes to setting levels. So here's what I've decided to do. I set the trim first, so it peaks just under. And then I set the sliders so that uh, it looks okay on the meters. And after that, I use my ears. Because some of the mics, even though they look the same on the meter, they sound louder. Why is that? It might be different frequencies that uh, I'm more sensitive to. It might be clarity, it seems to me. Something's clear, you don't need so much of it. You can't quite hear so well, you tend to want more. So in the end, I decided that uh, music is in the ear of the beholder, not in the eyes. And the measurement. The measurement is useful, but in the end, music is in the ears. So I've used my ears to fine tune the settings. That's how I'm doing it for now. The Sennheiser MD431 Mark II is a largish microphone. It's longer than the SM58 by some margin, as you can see. Um, a little bit girthier. It is noticeably lighter and it doesn't really seem that much larger when you're using it but it is as you can see. I'm going to switch to the Sennheiser and see what I notice immediately if anything I'm on the 33 at the moment. Now I'm on the Sennheiser what I noticed immediately, apart from a bit of handling noise, but then this one's on a stand. Um, eh, 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 I noticed that and a little bit of woof, woof, woof down there. Pleasing enough, not complaining. There is definitely a bit of a ah, ah, ah going on there. SM58, S, S, M58. This is the SM58 and it's got some of that as well. Perhaps even more, a little bit edgier. The bottom you might consider a little bit firmer maybe because it doesn't go down so low. Bring it in closer. So I'll just go through them again. This is the SM58. This is a Sennheiser 431. And uh, this is my reference, the uh, Earthworks SV33. Back on the Sennheiser. Sennheiser. Pops. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. What did Peter Piper pick? A peck, remember. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peppers, peppers. If I'm going to be careful then. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked, no problem. 33. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Sennheiser. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper. SM58. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peck. Ugh. Pretty good, I think. Going to get something. Pretty good. S's. Sennheiser S's. Sizzy Susie, shoeshine girl, sitting in a shoeshine shop. 
All day long she sits and shines. All day long she shines and sits. Susie, Susie, shoe shine girl. It's accentuated. Yeah, it's accentuated uh, to my ears, but it's, it's kind of sweet. And again, live mic. They're looking, pushing through. Everybody's looking at pushing through the guitars, even the basses. And everybody wants that area. So I don't know. Um, anyway, for live, I guess. I'm quite liking it. Live, live, live. Good bit of weight and a nice uh, something a bit. La ah 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 ah. Live, live in the mix. SM58, Susie Susie Shushine Girl, Susie Susie Shushine Girl. Yeah, a little bit raspy and edgy up there. Um, so there we go, breath. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Who, 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 who. If I'm going to do that, I may as well so you can hear. Who, who, who do you think you are? 33. Who do you think you are? Who, who, who do you think you are? Who, who, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Who, who? If you do that, it overpowers the rest of the the, the uh, frequency. SM58. Who do you think you are? Who, who, who do you think you are? Who, who do you think you are? Okay, so the uh, the Sennheiser is pretty good at that. Again, you're going to get something that's going to be like that. But I may as well go to the extreme, so you hear. Yeah, I think uh, pretty good, pretty good. Proximity. Further away, bring it in closer for some prox. Bring it in, bringing it in closer for some proximity. Bringing it in closer for some proximity. Starting to get a bit of that with that edgy, not edgy, accentuated bit there. Bringing it in closer for some proximity. Bringing it in closer for some proximity. Going down, going down. Going down, going down. Going closer for some proximity. Going down, going down. Now, what I notice and which what I like, what I can even do with a bit more maybe, but it's a studio mic, is there's a kind of frequency, but higher up is clear. Uh, so it seems a very good balance. This is a 33. Going down, going down, going down, and the ah doesn't overpower. Nicely balanced. The Sennheiser. Going down, going down, going down, down. There's not so much of the in there, so it's um, okay. SM58. Going down, going down. Going down. Doesn't really go down, so we get much more. <sighs> Polar pattern. So this is um, hyper or super cardio. I think there's a slight distinction between those two. But please. Okay. On axis, tangled up. Let's drop one on the floor while we're at it. Oh, it was safe. Um, on axis, on axis, coming around to the side slightly, coming around to the side, just a slight change there. Continuing round to the side, continuing more cutting there, continuing quite severe, quite suddenly, it's fine. Quite a lot, you can hear the room from the reflections on the ceiling and so on. So bear that in mind. Coming round to the back, coming round, and there you get a bit of a lobe. You can hear coming round there, more rejection, more rejection, get a little bit more, but it's low, it's down there. <laughs> round about there, I think. Coming back round to the side, good rejection, strong rejection there. Coming on axis, not fully there, coming on. Starting to get full on there, coming on, coming on, full on there. Very good. Handling on hum. Handling on hum. In use, you can hear there's a lot of low frequency stuff there. In in use, I haven't found that an issue, or well, partly because I don't do that. Compared to the SM58, which doesn't go as low, so you're not going to get that if it's down there, it just won't, won't do it. But the SM58 I found to be pretty good. So let's compare it. Well, actually, they're about the same. If, if the SM58 actually is probably a bit noisy, it's got more upper frequencies and still got a bit of low thump as well. It's probably because I'm wearing headphones and these are live mics, so don't fiddle with them, really. 
unless you have to. Sometimes you have to, but. Back on the uh, MD431. Does it encourage anything? D does it encourage anything as I'm singing? Does it, kind of singing. Does it encourage anything? As a, uh, does it encourage us? Uh, uh, I quite like to, to play with that area up there. It seems to come through. I quite like to, to play with that area up there. It seems to come through. 33. Does a 33. What difference I see? There's not that there, is it? So I don't want to go and play with that so much. It's down to me now. Hmm. Down to me to make my own toys. What do I want to do? I just, there's nothing uh, particularly I'm invited to do. Kind of like, do what you want. 33, uh, S, uh, not 33, uh, M, Sennheiser, Sen, Sen, Sen. Do I want to make use of that or do I want to avoid it? If, if you've got a sibilant voice, you might want to avoid it a little. Other than that, it can be quite, uh, other than that, it can be quite, <laughs> other than that, it can be, yeah, other than that, <laughs> other than that, you know, it's all right, it's quite good fun. Actually, it's, um, I, f I found it's quite fun, quite fun. This is the SM58. I noticed that straight away. Do I want to do any? Yeah, it seems to just lend itself to giving it a little bit of lend itself to give it a lend itself to give. Does this one lend itself quite so much? Not really, because they get a bit more of that down there. So it kind of doesn't accentuate that so much. So maybe it's nice for a maybe a slightly sweeter thing. Yeah, I think so. A slightly sweeter thing. Yeah, probably not a rocker's mic. Mm, don't want to say, but. Mm. The S V thirty three, yeah, boom. The S V thirty three, and go where I want. S V thirty three. Likes and dislikes. I'm gonna mm, stay on this one. It's grown on me. The lightness. I don't mind. I don't mind. It doesn't have to be heavy. A lot of people like the lightness. I know there's a lot of noise now. It's generally not that. That's uh, noticeable. The finish has grown on me. The looks. It's a bit like a kind of, um, I tell you, it's an 80s design. It looks a bit like, it looks a bit like a spaceship or something or a rocket. Uh, I don't mind it. It's kind of, it's kind of grown on me. It's unusual. Isn't it? it's, a, it's a little bit flash. I don't know. It's unusual. Um, dislikes. I like a nice case that I can use straight away. Do away with the other stuff, save some money there. Just give me what I need to take it on a gig, if you please, and put the rest of it. Ship it in a cardboard box with foam, it'll do me. I get some very nice cardboard boxes these days, I can tell you. Seem to be laser cut or something. So, maybe one of those. Uh, the switch. Uh, I don't need it because of these. Do most people? You can lock it. Um, uh, as you know, it could do without the wobbling about. It's a little bit, a little bit cheapy when you feel it. It's not obtrusive in the hand. Any improvements? I could usually, as always, I could probably do with a bit more low end, but it's not bad actually. I'd be quite happy with it. Quite happy with it. Quite happy. Yeah, quite a bit bloomy, a bit old school. But it is an '80s design and a copy of that, so an update of that. So they've kept. I think they've done well actually. But as always, we'll see uh, what the other fellow makes of it. Be seeing you. Maybe you're poor, maybe you have wealth. Maybe in demand or maybe baby on the shelf. Whatever your situation, there's one thing you should do. Reject all automation and let me work on you. I'm Mr. Manual. Automatic's not my style. I like to man any manipulator. It's guaranteed to make you smile. I like to manually manipulate you, guaranteed to make you manually manipulate you, guaranteed to make you manually manipulate you, guaranteed to make you manually manipulate you, 
really manipulate you. It's guaranteed to make you smile. Yeah. Indeed. Hmm. Welcome to the end of the Namiko.